Hi, my name is Romano and today we are looking at how to improve the value stream. So what is a value stream? A value stream is the stream of value where we go from idea until a production and it is the sum of all of these steps. So when we want to improve this value stream we first need to identify such a value stream. So that will be our first uh, move. So I have prepared here a small value stream. Um, first we have the idea of um, for example of a feature. Then we are going to write the specification of uh, this feature. Then uh, we implement this feature. Um, we are going to manually test that feature and then we are going to manually deploy this feature. So what we can he see here is a classical value stream that we have. Of course this is completely simplified. After that, uh, when we have done that, we are going to identify the people which are working in this value stream. So in the idea phase we have the business which is working uh, in this value stream. Um, the business is also writing the business specification and the developers are implementing uh, the, the features. In that case the quality engineer is manually testing um, the, this feature and the operation is going to manually deploy this feature. When we have done the identification which people are working in this value stream we are going to measure. We are going to measure how long it takes for uh, such a value stream to operate. So in that case we measure how long it does take to um, create that idea and for that we are going to uh, look at the process time, at the lead time and the percentage completed and accurate. So the process time is the time it really needs, so the, the, the time that actual work is done. And the lead time is the time from the start of the task until the end of the task. The percentage completed and accuracy is um, how much uh, or how many times this, uh, the work was not completed, for example here, um, that it needed to go back into this step. So uh, when it gets a rejection. So here we have process time of 8 hours, lead time of 8 hours and uh, we have roughly a percentage uh, completed accuracy from uh, 75% which means in 75% everything was okay but in 25% it was not okay. When we look at our writing specification here, for example, we have a process time of 40 hours, a lead time 80 hours and percentage completed and accurate uh, is 50%. In the implementation, we have measured that the process time is 40 hours, lead time 80 hours and percentage completed and accuracy is 75%. In manual testing, we have a process time of 16 hours, lead time 40 hours and percentage accuracy of 50%. And last but not least, manual deployment, process time of one hour, uh, lead time, so how long the process takes, eight hours and percentage accuracy of 80%. So when we have done that, um, we will have a look at um, the numbers. So we will sum up all these numbers. And this is done 
in the analysis step, where we are going to analyze um, how long it really takes. And when we sum up the process time, then we get the total process time, which is 105 hours in this case, in this example, and the total lead time is 216 hours. The rolling percentage of complete and accuracy is only 11%. This means that in only 11% a feature is really going through this example pipeline and the activity ratio is 48%. 40, uh, this is a total uh, pro process time divided by total lead time. So when we are doing the analysis, we also go and identify where we have bottlenecks, where we have handovers and such stuff. During this analysis phase, we also look at, at, this, at this process time and also at the lead time and identify where we have uh, very long waitings. When we have done that, we are going into the fifth step, which is analyzing uh, the future. In this step, we are going to create a new a target value stream. Again, in this target value stream, we have uh, the step of the idea, which is done by the business with now a process time of eight hours, lead time eight hours, and percentage completed accuracy of 100. This is our target, where we want to be. We are going then to not write any more specification. We are going to write user stories, and this will be written by the team with a process time of eight hours, lead time eight hours, and percentage complete accuracy. Our target is 100%. So we don't want to have any rework in our target system. And then we have the implementation step. Again, here the team is doing the implementation step with a process time of two, 20 hours, lead time 40 hours, and the percentage complete of an accuracy of 80%. We will see um, now why this is because we don't have any manual testing, we have a continuous integration and in this continuous integration our server will do the building and also the automatically testing. Um, of course we want to use this build server so the developers are allowed to, uh, to, to, to do uh, the testing with the continuous integration system and so the continuous integration system can also reject some uh, of the implementations that have been done because, for example, a test is failing. That's the whole purpose of automated testing or the continuous integration. Continuous integration is fast, process time is 0.1 hour, lead time is 0.1 hour, and percentage complete and accuracy um, will be, um, will be uh, 100%. The continuous deployment so the next step will be continuous deployment. There we want to automatically deploy uh, directly into UAT and then also directly into production if everything is okay. And again, here we have a process time of 0 0.1 um, hour, uh, lead time of 0 0.1 hour and percentage complete and accuracy, our target of 100%. Now again, um, we are going to analyze the total process time. Here we see that we have 36.2 hours. The total lead time is uh, 56.2 hours. Um, the rolling complete and uh, accuracy is 80%. So 80% of the ideas will go directly into production and the activity ratio is at 64%. So this will be our target value stream where we want to go. So in the next step, we then will go and measure and define measures for that. So um, we will look at the 
the current value stream and at the target value stream and identify what needs to be done to become the target value stream. And then we are going to prioritize these steps and put them into the backlog. And the last step is the most important step. It's the seventh step where we need to repeat this exercise. This is not an exercise which we are only doing once. This is an exercise which we are doing multiple times over a year. I, I would do it every three months and look how we are going into the direction of the target value stream. So you can see to analyze and to create such a value stream and a value stream identification is very, very easy. And it's not really uh, rocket science. I have uh, created a guide. I will uh, post that also with this video. You can download this guide. And if you have any questions, um, just write me uh, a, a message or a comment below. Thanks very much.